What's up guys, Zinigami here, and let's do floor 9 of the Spiral Abyss. This is a new Spiral Abyss with 2021, which has a brand new set of 4 floors. Floors 9, 10, 11, and 12 are all brand new, so if you're used to the first set of floors with Spiral Abyss, you're going to have to break out some new teams and figure out what you're doing. We also have a new Blessing of the Abyssal Moon effect, which if you're making an Ice Crystallized Reaction, that's Geo, Cryo, none of the other ones do this, but the Ice Geo, Cryo, crystallized reaction gives you the crystal and whenever you pick up that crystal you're going to deal damage in an aoe and also reduce your e cooldown by one second which is really nice you're gonna be able to do a lot of ease if you're putting geo and cryo characters together now for the first two floors there's a constant cryo effect on the floor so you'll be able to do this especially on floors 9 and 10 where if you're using geo characters to crystallize albedo ning wong Geo main character, Zhang Li, whoever you're using as your Geo character, if you're making those crystallizers, you're gonna get a whole bunch of ice rocks and you can pick them up and it's going to do a lot of extra damage. On your other floors, I wouldn't worry about it too much, is a nice extra bonus, but it's not worth going out of your way to try to get those um, little bonuses for the blessing of the abyssal moon and this blessing will change so if you're watching this video in the future there might be a completely different effect that has some better synergy or worse synergy with your team so on floor nine the effect is going to be sheer cold which is just like dragon spine there's gonna be ice everywhere you're not going to be losing your we're not gonna have reduced stamina usage so you can still sprint and do your charge attacks and all that without too much trouble but you will have to make sure you get close to the fire braziers so that way you can warm yourself up just like dragon spine content uh, for the first floor we're going to have Mita Churl, Guard, Slime, but the Cryo Abyss Mage on the second floor is really something to note that you're want, gonna really wanna have a strong, easy to apply fire use on the second team. For both teams here, we're going to want to have fire on both teams, uh, but team two is also going to want to either bring an Animo character or a Cryo character because there's going to be an Electro Fatui on the second half and the second half with the Electro Vitui means you're going to want to have an Ice character or an Animal character so that way you can swirl ice and break his shield. Uh, Cryo Gunner is also broken best by a uh, Electro character, so you can also swirl the Fatui onto the Cryo Gunner as well. An Animal Box you just take it out. Nothing too important to note on Team 1 other than you've got an Ice Shield Wall character, so Claymores, Explosives, Fire, all great for this. And then Chamber 3, another Abyss Mage on the second half. So again, we're going to have a character who can apply fire very quickly. And then a Lawa Churl on the first half. So fire characters, Geo characters, Claymore characters, all very important. So for my team setup, I'm going to be using Venti, Jean, Razor, and Fischl on my first half. And my second half is going to be using... Uh, uh, Sorry, sorry, not official here. Uh, I'm gonna have Shungling in the first half. My second half is going to have Ning Wong, Fischl, Benny, and Diona. Uh, of course, I assume many of you are not gonna have characters just like mine. The important ones to note are the fires on both on both teams and also making sure that you have one main DPS on both teams. If you've already made it to floor nine, you're gonna already know that one of your characters on both your teams is going to be your heavy carry character your main dps for me it's going to be razor on one team and ning wang on the other nice thing about these uh, if you are here i assume you already know what cards to take i'm going to be taking the cards generally they're always effective on the entire floor not ones in the entire chamber and for this first one note that we're going to have one of the Braziers on the right side, one of the Braziers on the left side. So you're going to generally want to pull back to one of these and just do most of your fighting here. If you have Venti, Venti makes a lot of these floors very easy. You can pull... Oh, what is what is this? Automatic Geo... What is that? Um, that's that's a, a bug. <laughs> that's, that's not normal. That's weird. Okay, cool. Well, we got that. 
Note that the enemies standing here and punching these braziers are going to deal damage to them, but it's not going to actually impede your Spiral Abyss progress or score. So even if they break these things, it's not actually going to be bad for you. And you can kind of take that to your advantage, spend time letting them punch it and let your DPS split. You can focus on whoever's not fighting that right now and then come back and kill whoever's actually around these things. Because uh, whatever they break, all that happens is you just can't get the warming effect from them anymore. And so you'll have to go over to the other one and use that instead. But nothing too bad overall. Uh, going to make sure we are melting the ice off of these slimes first. I'm going to have a very, very easy time with this floor because I'm able to clear team, uh, floor 12 with my team. So floor 9 here is very very easy for me in comparison i just want to give you guys an overview of the general strategies of what to do this floor same thing as the second half we're going to run over and just try to spend most of our time fighting oops wrong side the left side of this one has these three guys and you want to take these out first they are going to be easier to kill than the Abyss Mage. And the last thing you want to ever have happen is to spend a lot of time breaking the Abyss Mage shield and have the Abyss Mage uh, just actually go back and then put his shield back on. It's going to waste a lot of time. So we're going to kill those guys first. Uh, the second half of three guys spawn, you can either go over there and finish them off. But since I've got the Abyss Mage here, I'm just going to finish him off next. Uh, but like I said, the strategy is always going to be killing the Abyss Mage very quickly. Now that we have another one, I'm going to go over here and take out these guys first. Diona and Benny, very strong healers if you have them. Benny is also here to make sure we break the Abyss Mage shield. I'm going to be slow slapping his E onto the Abyss Mage shield every time that's on cooldown and also using the ultimate there. If you have Benny and Jean on the same team, note that if I put the Benny ultimate on the floor, it's not going to do things like it's not going to melt this shield, it's not going to um, break the Abyss Mage shield, but if you combine it with Jean's ultimate, the AoEs of Jean's ultimate and Benny's ultimate together actually give you constant fire damage as an AoE because Benny's ultimate is going to give you that ice effect or the fire effect and Jean's ultimate is actually going to um, swirl the effects that are around there. So if you have Jean and Benny ultimates layer them together, you'll very quickly put fire everywhere and you're going to break through abyss mage shields and you're going to break through uh, Mita Troll's shields as well very, very fast. Floor 2? Chamber 2? I mix up the wording of these all the time. Chamber 2 on Floor 9. We're going to take the one that's effective on the entire floor. It's just nice. So for Venti, if you're ever using Venti, you're always going to want to pay attention to where enemies spawn and then pull back to good places to try to round them up. So I'm going to pull back to the bo uh, back right because I know enemies are spawning on the right side here. And this way I can group up everybody in that first ultimate. And then here I'm going to keep them in this line. Because as soon as my event heat results again, I'm going to shoot it and try to grab everyone there and get everybody there. Note that Venti and most ultimates are always going to aim at the nearest enemy. So if there's even a group of enemies and I'm saying like right here is always going to shoot directly towards and across the nearest enemy. Excuse me. Oh, hey, dailies reset. <laughs> Thanks. We don't need that on the screen right now. So if you ever have your venti shoot in a really stupid direction, just try to always pay attention to who's closest to him, and it should always shoot in that direction. So we'll take out this last slime, and the last two enemies are going to be two more slimes. Shungling to help break through the shields, and if you're using venti, venti's ultimate. I have a lot of elemental or energy regen on venti. Highly recommend a ton of energy regen on venti, so that way you can throw his ultimate basically as often as you want without ever having to worry about it being off cooldown. So even with two enemies here, I'm happy to throw out Venti's ultimate and then just charge up ultimates for the rest of my team. 
second half of chamber two. Running in. You can always wait for your stamina regen before you start. It can help out if you're having a tough time on fights to make sure you get energy back. I'm going to immediately try to fight and kill the uh, Electro Fatui here because the Electro Fatui is one of the most annoying characters for me. I absolutely hate him. So I'm always going to try to ult him down very fast. Diona E takes out his shield quickly. Oh, both of us are here. Whatever. Can you guys come back to the fire here? I'm getting cold. Did that not break it? Oh, it didn't break it. Let's so always try to fire on the fire. And I did what you should never do as I left one of the eight Fatui's alive, even though he was almost dead. After I spent all the time to break his shield, the shield gets put back up, which is a huge pain. And here's also where having animal characters is incredibly useful. Having them group up is very nice if you're having animal characters on your team. Animal characters swirling their effects off each other often just makes their shields pop and proc each other. So using Sucrose, Venti, Jean especially, you want to gather up all the Fatui's and take them out. Otherwise, prioritize whichever enemy is the type that you're having the hardest time breaking their shield and try to take them down before anything else. The last one here for chamber three, I'll take, yeah, you know, we'll just take the sprint one. First half of chamber three, I believe this one, I cannot remember where enemies spawn off the top of my head. Ah, yes. So I'm going to just throw out my venti zolts without having to worry about them too much. But we are going to take out the two Hillichurls first. Hillichurls here, very easy to ca kill compared to the Ice Mitochurl. Take them out and then we can focus on the last big boy. Use your fire, melts him fast. And then after that, you just fight him like any other Hillichurl. Nothing too fancy on this floor. Just make sure you focus on taking the two guys on the outside first. The last thing you want is just small little peppering of damage from those two that builds up very fast. And it can do a lot of damage. Those Hillichurls, the ranged Hillichurls, although small, add up to a lot of damage over time. Always remember where your fire is. Don't get too excited and always pull them back. And we'll be able to get out of here in just a second. One, two, three. If you're using Razor, general notes on Razor, if you're using him out of his ultimate form, you want to do one through two, three combo with his attacks. If you're using him in ultimate form, you want to do one, two, three, four with his attack combo. His fourth attack outside of ultimate is too slow to be worth it, so you want to just use the 1-2-3 combo and then break off either by jumping, by sprinting, or using his E. And then if you ever use his E, always jump cancel that. But if you're in his ultimate form, go for all four attacks. <laughs> going to immediately focus on the Abyss Mage, trying to break his shield and take him out using the... Benny E's as often as possible to try to break that very quickly. And then going to Ning Wong to finish it off. And then always, like I've been doing, pulling back towards the Braziers and doing most of your fighting on or around the Braziers. So you always want to be right next to them. Makes everything a lot easier whenever you don't have to worry about taking that constant fire damage or ice damage. And that is in a second all three floors for floor nine thanks so much for watching guys if you have other tips for what to do and what to use on floor nine please let people know in the comments down below share us what teams you use to great success and keep an eye out for a floor 10 guide coming out very soon i've been zinigami thank you so much for watching y'all stay beautiful